He's dead, honey, because mommy killed him. Goddamn force of nature. I am the writing on the wall, the whisper in the classroom. They're coming to get you, Barbara. You see, Jason was my son, and today is his birthday. Sid, don't you blame the movies. Movies don't create psychos. Movies make psychos more creative. <laughs> When life gives you lemons, do what Adam Chaplin does. Hit it in the face a thousand times a second and reduce what was once its head to a bloody stump. My name's John Joe Lyons and on this glorious day it is my absolute pleasure to introduce to you my review for Adam Chaplin. Written and directed by Emmanuel DeSanti, Adam Chaplin stars Emmanuel DeSanti, Wilma Zimosa, and Gialio DeSanti, among many others. Adam Chaplin tells the story of Adam Chaplin, a man on a path of bloody retribution as he obliterates any and all in his way in search of the men who murdered his wife. I have been searching for this film for years. Years! I first saw the brutality that this film has to offer on a YouTube supercut of death scenes. Unfortunately, the title of the film wasn't listed, so ever since then I've just been waiting to stumble across it again. Well, that day is today and the time is now. Let's f do this. The film begins with some police officers getting their heads exploded by the punches of an unseen man. Cut to a train where we see Adam Chaplin holding a burned picture of his wife. He falls asleep and then we cut to his wife tied to a chair. She is joined by the mask wearing Denny and his two sons. It seems Adam's wife owed Denny some money and didn't pay on time. In response, Denny sets her ablaze. <laughs> to Adam as a thief grabs his wallet and runs away. The thief stops in a tunnel and looks through his ill-gotten gains, finding Adam's wallet empty aside from a newspaper clipping. The thief then hears something in the shadows before being approached by Adam. He threatens Adam with a knife, and so Adam disarms him. Adam asks the thief about Denny and reveals the demon on his back giving him these godlike powers. The thief doesn't know anything, leaving only one course of action. <sighs> Just so happy. Cut to a police officer and his boss. The officer says that a young boy saw a ghost in the sewer drain, so his boss sends him down to investigate. Underground, the officer spots an upside down crucifix bloodstain on the wall before finding the thief's remains. Adam then appears, allowing himself to be arrested. He's transported back to the station where we meet Officer Clarence. He beats Adam around the head with a shotgun, demanding to know who he is when the demon appears. The cop is having none of that and claps Adam one last time before threatening to shoot. Just a terrible idea. Suddenly the man starts bleeding from the nose and eyes as Adam stands, kicks the brother in the face 500 times and then punches him into a wall, flattening him against it. <laughs> Somehow the cop is still alive and Adam gives him a chance to tell him what he wants to know. The cop is in no state to answer any questions, so Adam finishes him off by unloading the shotgun into him. Uh -oh. Cut to a commercial for dog food and then grainy footage of a rabid dog attacking. Cut to Adam showering off blood and looking in the mirror before flashing back to him and his wife. They share a moment before we cut to Adam now standing in front of the smoking police station. Then we cut to Adam finding his smouldering wife. He hugs her, which I assume stings, and her crucifix burns a mark into Adam, giving him the demon's power. Sure. Cut to Adam walking through the streets looking for his next target, then to a homeless man. Mike Carrera. Mr. Carrera. Mike stands, pops a couple cleavers into his jacket and then goes on his merry old way. Cut to a couple of homeless guys having a conversation. Mike bumps into homeless guy one who kicks off and pulls a gun. Oh dear. Mike responds by knocking the man down and breaking his arm backwards. <laughs> Homeless man number two tries to pick up the gun, but immediately regrets it when he comes face to blade with Mike's cleaver. Mike then finds some face paint, has a doodle, and falls asleep. Cut to Denny's two sons, who happen to be cops arresting Mike for murder. In the interrogation room, the men introduce themselves as Ben and Derek. They want Mike to find and kill Adam. If he refuses, they'll send him to prison, so he reluctantly agrees. At the burned out police station, Mike finds a picture of Adam's wife and then goes to meet Denny. Denny shows him the man that he cleaved up is still alive thanks to Neurochrome 3. He then tells his origin story. Right, 
Okay, lay it on me. Denny had a dog called Denny, okay, who ended up eating a whole bunch of Neuracure 3, right? The dog went crazy and ate Denny Boy's face, the effects of which he shows off to Mike. <laughs> Denny's dad shows up and makes Denny Boy kill the dog Denny, and that's why adult Denny is a bit of a fair. Oh, and that Neuracure 3? Apparently it gives you superpowers. <laughs> Anyway, Denny tells Mike if he doesn't kill Adam, old Cleaver face here will testify and get him put away for life, so off he pops. Cut to the homeless guy who got boiled off earlier as he tries to start some with another randomer. That is until Adam shows up and teaches him to play nice. <laughs> Cut to Mike turning up with the brothers and heading into Adam's building. Now, I really like the unconventional structure of the narrative here. For the last 25 minutes or so, we've been following a separate character who's been proven to be deadly in combat, almost as if he's being built up as a match for Adam. The amount of time that we've spent with him feels like a huge build up to an epic battle. It feels as if the shared screen time denotes an equal footing for both characters. Narratively, they're a match locked in a battle to the death that neither one even wants to be a part of. They have no quarrel with each other, but through the actions of Denny, must now face off in a war that may not only destroy themselves, but everyone around them in a hundred mile radius. Adam Chaplin versus Mike Carrera. Let's go. Ah! Moving on, Ben understandably ducks out, leaving his blind brother to fend for himself as we cut to Denny having to think about shooting his dog, bisecting Cleaver face. You know when you're just having like one of the worst days ever. <laughs> and receiving the news of this failure. That's when he tells Ben that they're going to recover his brother, dead or alive. Probably dead. <laughs> oh, alive! <laughs> Denny begins to mobilize the troops as we cut to flashbacks of Adam hugging his crispy wife and the cross burn in his back creating the demon. That's when Denny lets off some shots blowing up Adam's hideout. Adam then emerges with a burning and impelled Derek in tow, clearly not having a good time. And this, ladies and gentlemen, is where things get really fun. Adam drops Derek and steps forward before absolutely decimating the opposition. <laughs> Adam then tells Ben it's his turn as the demon produces a shotgun, sending Clarence's regards from hell. Adam uses this to blow off Ben's hand and then his lower half before Denny finishes the job. <laughs> Denny and Adam then face off, with Adam beating the mask into Denny's face so he can never take it off. <laughs> Denny admits that he never actually shot his dog, leaving his dad to do it instead, and is then ended for good by Adam. <laughs> Adam then seemingly dies with the demon asking for the debt to be paid. Adam briefly sees his wife before disintegrating as his soul was damned to hell. The end. Adam Chaplin can be best described as budget crow on crack. It's another movie that feels like an adaptation of an anime that doesn't exist and that's slowly becoming my favourite subgenre. I would kill to see an Adam Chaplin anime by the way. The film is a cartoon in almost every way from the presentation to the sound design to the face mask that almost every character is adorned with. I also love the random narrative choice of following Mike Carrera for as long as we do just to have him dashed out a window. I love the stylistic editing as well. When Adam hits a bad guy, the way they cut that motion imbues the act with unmeasurable power and makes the exploding heads and buckets of flying blood feel legit. This is pure and simple unadulterated fun and I adore it. I seriously cannot wait to watch more from the filmmaker and the production company behind it. Awesome stuff and I highly recommend. Such a good movie. So fun. So that was my review of Adam Chaplin. Have you seen it? If you have, let me know in the comments below what you thought. But in the meantime, as always, like, share, subscribe. My name is John Joe Lyons. Stay frosty. Yeah!